of us have independent spirits. Um, we're all good friends, and um, we just absolutely love each other, and independent spirits couldn't describe us better. We, um, we all have similar spirits, but they're different, and they're just absolutely wonderful, like our art is different. It's just really cool. If you open up the flyer, you see there's a little key in the flyer, and I put symbols in my work. Everything but the birds have them, and um, you can look at my little key, and my philosophies are in all my work. So everything I think about, everything I believe in in life is in these symbols, and they usually appear in my work. For example, these are wheels, and they always represent movement. Um, these are stars, so you have hopeful dreams. This is the cosmos up here, you can see that illustrated. I call this piece the three sentinels, but um, there's always little critters. I love the little critters, and they're all over. So you look at these little things and they have multiple feet and uh, funny heads and funny hair. All my traveling series that I did when I was in New York, they have little critters in them. They're really a lot of fun. And then this big piece right here has a lot of my symbols in it. It has gears and wheels and a ladder and uh, the dotted lines which represent movement. So when you're looking at the pieces, you can say, what is she saying? And instead of walking by a piece and saying, I don't get that. What is that? I like the color, but I don't get it. Then you say, if you know I'm talking to you, I want you to stop and try to figure it out. Think about it. It can be your own interpretation. It doesn't have to be mine. But it, it does mean something to me. And um, if it made you stop, then perhaps it means something to you too. First of all, I'll just tell you briefly that this is paint, acrylics, ink, resin, glass, I don't know what else, <laughs> but lots of, lots of stuff. I, I love texture, um, and, but the story is what I'm going to tell you. Um, first of all, the name is Cecropian Dream. I don't think Cecropian is a real word, but the moth is actually called a Cecropia. Mm -hmm. And in, it had to be in the 1980s, I lived in Ohio. In my backyard was this moth. Now, when they come out, they have two weeks to live. Mm -hmm. Two weeks. They go through a whole year of process for two weeks. So you have these experiences in life, and then you go on, you raise your children, you move, you do, do whatever. And then one day, I look at this blank. This is wood. This is uh, made on wood. And that memory came back. Mm -hmm. Now why, you can ask. I have no idea. But that was the moment for me to remember. Now, if you see a Cecropian moth, you will see it's, it's not quite this glorious. It's very <laughs> brown on the outside. But when it, its wings come apart, that middle part, oh, wow, it's really quite miraculous. So that is my Cecropian dream. It's what I remember and what I choose to remember and what I choose to <laughs> make uh, as the truth uh, about my painting. This is a vessel that I made. Um, it is not as tall. I could probably put something this tall in it. But this is a vessel that I made all by hand. It's a slab piece. Um, I roll the clay out, and then I get creative, and I put the texture into it. Um, you can see that it has holes in it. And I sort of thought that it looked like a tree when I made it. When I was all done making it, and it needed to be glazed, um, Callaway, our then 18-month-old grandson, came out to the studio and he wanted to play clay. So he said, play clay. And so I put an apron on him, I set him on the table, I gave him um, glaze, and he took the paintbrush and he went like this, and in the teeniest little 18-month-old voice, he went, plop, 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 plop. So um, I did the first coat of glaze so that if he missed anything, 
it would be okay. And so he put the second coat of glaze on, um, which was more of a red color. And all I had to do is I just had to keep turning because he was so little, he kept doing it right in the same place. So I would turn it and turn it and turn it. So you can see the, the deep brownish red here and then the brighter red here, which goes all the way to the top. And then we fired it. And when it came out of the kiln, I didn't like it. And so we plop plopped again with the blue. And when he and I were done plop plopping with the blue, then I said, it's done. Um, clay is different when these ladies do their paintings. If they want something to be blue, they can take the blue paint and they put it on the canvas and it's blue. Um, this glaze is sort of a muddy tan. The other red is real coppery looking. And then these blues are almost uh, grayish tan. So you sort of have to trust yourself when working with them, having done that color before and saying, yeah, it'll work. So that has three different blues, two different reds, and some black in it. It's just fun. It's just fun to do.